Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another episode of Nerd Variety Podcast. What's up? Say hello. No, Hi. say hello. Hi. I will I will not say that now. I will hello. say every other variation of it. Hey, what's up? Hi. How I say y'all? It three times. No, I refuse. Anyway, but yes, we are Nerd Variety Podcast. We talk about all sorts of nerdy stuff all the time. I am Josh, and I am joined today by uh, hunter, uh, hacker man, Rafferty. I am neither a hacker or a man, so <gasps> no. They twist. Yes. And we are also joined by Hannah Hype Man Hogan. That's fair. Yeah, you should hear her at um, wrestling matches. <laughs> I've never been to a wrestling probably. match, but I do kind of want to go. You should go to a, a wrestling match. Um, isn't uh, like uh, Corey's boyfriend's um, a wrestler, right? I don't. I don't know. Courtney's, yeah. All I know okay, is yeah, I yeah. just like to learn one of those. About one, 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 yeah, one of those wrestling matches. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I no, I lost it. Never mind. Cool. Lost what? Good. Good, good talk. Know. I forgot what I had. It's gone. Not again. Yeah. Not again. Yeah. We'll talk about this, Hunter. No, we didn't. But yes, we hope everyone's having a good. Um, day of the week that you're listening to this, um, being safe during this uncertain time, which we all know means the, the virus is still out there and, you know, virus? creep me. There's a virus? Oh, dang it, I'm talking to Hunter from 2019. Oh, man, not again. He gets no. so confused. Anyway, but yes, we hope everyone's being safe. And um, if you are venturing out, we hope you're being careful and being even more careful. And, you know, that you're, you know, I'm glad you're listening to us. And remember, but, you know, alcohol kills germs in your body better than bleach does. You, you shouldn't drink bleach. It kills you. But you should drink alcohol. Is that kills uh, you slowly. Yes. They're not wrong, but talk to your doctor. <laughs> yes. But who here likes movies and TV shows? <clears throat> Just Hannah. All right, we got somebody. We got somebody. Oh, yeah, Just yeah, Hannah. We got somebody. Just Hannah. I like movies yeah. and TV shows. Yeah. I, I only play video games. <clears throat> I only I do right. video games and listen to music. The only media worth paying attention to. Exactly. Medias, whatever. But but movies and yeah. show, TV shows in present time have a, have a lot of special effects. Special movies have always have been the pioneers of of special effects but tv shows are, have been taking taking that into consideration as they get more budgets and are that people demand more from them budget so, is definitely a key part of that too oh yes and we will talk about that uh it can make or break whatever it is they're trying to make yes but yeah or break. we just want to talk about the various uh aspects of having special effects and what is that you know what all does that entail in a in your favorite movie and or whatever show you're watching so um should you rely heavily on special effects it depends that's what i was gonna say yes it does <laughs> it definitely depends uh did you have a follow-up to that hannah i could i mean i could yeah. too so i i was gonna let you follow up but then you just kind of sat there so um, I watch a lot of sci-fi and fantasy, and those what? are definitely like, the biggest genres that use um, that use special effects. Yeah. Um, All practical. A lot well, are practical. It's, it's fun but... to to like to talk about the differences because I think back to. Um, Star Trek the original series where like they have all these blinking lights and all these futuristic looking consoles and it's just mm -hmm. like Christmas lights behind glass. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really fun to see how clever people have to be when they don't have any other options. And yep. I feel like I, in general, I appreciate the like CGI side of effects, um, but I, I also really appreciate the creativity that goes into the more practical effects. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. You get tra you get transported to a different world with good with a good CG effect. But you know, in the past, in the past, people had to kind of rely on practical, pure practical effects mm -hmm. or just kind of like on screen magic like for, from like the simplest thing of like using a um one of those metal metal like uh uh things where they make thunder i don't know what they're called uh, the sheets 
the metal, metal sheet. Just like the metal sheet. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just, or just making, or like in singing in the rain, where they uh, basically uh, uh, made it rain milk. So it, so you could, they could actually capture the the uh, the rain and the splashing that was going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I I do want to just say something real quick because uh, you know just talking about like. Uh, you know, there can also be a very stark difference between, like, really good CGI and then practical effects that are maybe on the lesser side of practical effects even. Um, it, but it's hard to say. So uh, I'll, I'll just say the example I'm thinking of, honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, the Warcraft movie that came out a few years ago, mm -hmm. I want to say like 2016 yeah. or so, maybe 2017. Um, yeah. And it was, all right. I I enjoyed it a lot as a fan of just the source material, you know, but that, that movie specifically has like for just about all of the, the human stuff, you know, it's split largely between the two sides. There's the humans and then there's the orcs and all that. And the orcs are like, that's all pretty much entirely CG and it looks fantastic. I think you can definitely tell how good it looks, but then you go to the human side and I, uh, it's been a, it's been a minute since I've seen it, but as I recall, it at least looks like most of the human effects are, are more practical and just having them like in the same movie and side by side in many cases, you can see like, yeah, maybe their entire budget went to the CG and they had less left over for the practical effects because, mm -hmm. like, again, the, the CG looks really good. The practical looks, and I, I guess it works. What do you mean practical? You mean, like, the costume work or well, just yeah, mostly, the, like, the, some, of the, some of the props they were trying to use? Yeah, a lot of that stuff. Yeah, a lot of like swords, armor, uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, they have to... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, when it comes to making people, and again, I'm going to talk about Star Trek, I think about uh, the original series and how you could tell... Because it came out in the 60s, you could tell that, like, the people were just characters, like, people in costumes. <laughs> yeah. Just people in costumes. Yep. And it's so funny to look back on and, and with, like, the, the CG that we have nowadays, so I, like, take... Thanos or um, a character like that, for example, where it's like Thanos they, isn't CG. No, but he's, but there's a lot of a lot of pieces it's going real. on, a lot of work going on. Um, versus what it was back in the '60s, where it's like that's literally just a dude in a costume. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm pretty sure, actually, I don't quote me on this because I can't remember exactly, but I want to say at least newer Thanos or more recent Thanos was. Uh, a mix of CG and yeah, I believe effects. that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why I think he looks so much better than well, like yeah, his first yeah. appearance or two, where he was I think pretty much entirely CG. I think he uh, was. Somehow. So I think there was a little bit of both. I think when they and I, I, think don't, the I could be completely wrong, more. but I think that when they were doing close-ups of his face, it was more practical effects. But I know that like in order to have like eye lines be correct in the movies they mm -hmm. had to have like a guy with like a thing on top of his head so it's like you look up at the, yeah. the eyes because Thanos is so much taller than a human yeah especially when no. they had more of it where he was interacting with different with characters instead of just doing mm -hmm. like his one little post credit scene in Avengers where he just kind of stood up that was a mix of like CG and practical mm -hmm. um, where you could see like his hand was real but his face was was you know deaf was a person but CG to give it some, mm -hmm. some depth to it uh, right. And then in other scenes, and then there's the, in Ultron. It was at the very end. He probably did. He probably did some mocap work, but they, they didn't have to worry about him interacting with anyone else. So it's, I guess the, so. They had to kind of work their way to where he would be. They had they had a, a plan for him to making a make him make him a real character, um, as Hunter as Hunter put him. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm kind of rewatching this, uh, like some of his first appearances. You know, like at the end of Endgame. And then, again, I was going to look at, uh, it was the end of, oh, no, sorry, not Endgame. Uh, I was going to say, Avengers, I was like, what? <laughs> first Avengers, and then the <laughs> end of Age of Ultron, I think it is. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that's when he shows up the first two times. And I, I remember the Age of Ultron one. I feel like that is much more heavily CGI because it's it's yeah. more out of focus and everything. Yeah. And uh, they don't have a... Yeah, he's not... He's not on there for very long. So they yeah. probably felt that it was cheaper or more efficient or something to do mostly CGI. Mm -hmm. um, probably get him just have, um, uh, what's his name? Josh Pearl went in a mocap suit and do that scene and then do the whole, make the whole thing CG after effects instead of having him do, have, have, have to have him act, interact with the character or do many um, like motion capture, like motion tracking and all that other, all that other fun stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But but they had to get to where he was human like, and that's where I think where a lot of modern CG effects come in. Where you know you want your your characters, if they're fantasy sci fi characters, to look human like, or mm -hmm. or keep them for, or so they don't look cross that line of like, oh that's creepy human versus that. Oh, Uncanny that's, Valley. That's yeah yeah that. We're that's, like that's, you're that's supposed that's to be a human. human. <laughs> Uh, yeah well yeah. it actually is kind of a throwback to our conversation about acting and like the difficulties and and uniqueness of acting in motion capture and like that entire mm -hmm. type of acting would not really be possible if it weren't for cg like certainly yeah. there is a more like physical you could be like a creature or a monster but if you're just in a suit that's still gonna i imagine be pretty different from doing motion capture yeah but there are even some some good actors that, that um i can't remember his name but he has been in a couple of, like he's, he was in pan's labyrinth and he did a a really good um he did he, he was a couple of characters in that and he was just in a suit um but still doing all the stuff which you know i think in the future and today in today's time that would be that was a that would be someone he will be using a mocap suit and then they would just cg all that mm -hmm. but, you could, but it still takes a lot of good acting to pull that off to make it to make it real and then having some good, you know, idea like, what do you want? Do you want a suit, or, or can, you, can we make a suit work, or can we make it work with, you know, mm -hmm. all the CG money? Yeah, it's actually interesting. It makes me think about there's a YouTube Red or I guess YouTube Premium series um, called Escape the Night, and it's essentially like a like a horror escape room reality TV show is the best way I can describe it. But they throw a bunch of YouTubers into like a, a horror escape room kind of thing and they have to try and escape the night. And, and so they do a lot of like the, they give some background, some behind the scenes stuff. And because it's like real people reacting in real time to these creatures, like they have to be, like there's not a lot of CG. There might be a little bit because there's like a spider lady and they lower her on some wires. But like mm -hmm. most of the creatures are just people in like really intense prosthetics and makeup. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's fascinating to see like because they kind of don't have the option of doing CG if they want their mm -hmm. characters to react the right way and to like feel the tension. Yeah. They, they can't do CG, so they have to rely on those practical effects. And it turns out really, yeah. really amazing, actually. They have some amazing yeah. creatures that they've made. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of that, too, it's just... Sorry, I'm also thinking of, uh, again, in the MCU, very close to Thanos, actually, is, uh, like, Nebula. Who That's her name. I couldn't remember it. Who, like, isn't CG, at least not mostly, I, I don't think. I think most of no, it is uh, all the all... makeup and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all it's uh, obviously a, it's a suit or shit. Maybe. Yeah, I mean obviously some of it is CG, like when she does some of the crazier like robot stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, for the most part I I believe it's just makeup and everything is really good. And I like oh, yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Looking at her but really but well going off, off the same tangent as that is it's uh, not so much her but Gamora, uh Zoe Sandala, because yeah. she's played she plays Gamora and she's a she's wearing like costume makeup and all that stuff like a lot of a lot of stuff over her but then also but if you look at but if you look at her role in, as um the blue alien lady in avatar and that was her that's her in like like mocap doing all the all the stuff um and then but she's a cg character so it's like you know how would how would how would how would have gamora looked if she was a cg character versus you know like a real character would it mm. would you have how would that? How would that? How would the movie be different? You'd have more CG. Yeah, cost you a lot more money, and it would not look as it would probably. It probably it wouldn't work. I don't think it would have worked as. Yeah. It would have been as as light 
or her yeah, foods would have been disliked. Honest, yeah, and on, you know, with that, I guess it could be part of the same thing. It's at least connected to it. But you know, they, I don't think characters generally can have the same like kind of chemistry between them. So like with her and Star Lord, I don't think that would have worked out nearly as well if she no. was CGI. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's like I love I love you glowing green dot. I love you too. <laughs> I'm sorry. All I can think of is um is community, you know, where they're doing the yeah. we're doing they're doing Abed's film <laughs> and uh like they have a they have a CG character, Glip Glop. And, uh, you know, this guy, oh, yeah, is, yeah. he's holding the tennis ball. And, and like, uh, the two characters are supposed to look at that. And then they're, like, one's looking up here, one's looking down there. It's like, why are you two looking different directions? Like, <laughs> wasn't wasn't he the, uh, wasn't he glib Glop? I thought the tennis ball was glib Glop. It's like, obviously it's the tennis ball. Why else would I be holding this? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> why is she wearing this thing or whatever? It's like, because it's sci-fi. No one cares. <laughs> Anyway, they just make fun of it, and it's, you know, it's, sorry, it just made me think of, like, trying to interact with CG yeah. characters, you know, it's like, um, I'm going to pretend there's something here, and I hope this mm-hmm. is actually yeah. the right place of where it's going to end up. I would love to see footage yeah. of an actor trying to, like, react in fear to a tennis ball. <laughs> like, oh, like um, this is a tennis ball. Jurassic, Jurassic, yeah, Jurassic World. Um, they react. The raptors are ten, are like green dots. Mm. Yeah. Wait, instead of like wait, wait, wait. They don't use actual raptors. No, can you believe it? Well, the, th- the thing is, they don't use they don't use um, like prosthetic or robotic like animatronics uh, dinosaurs like they did in the first the first couple ones. See, if they had that, they would probably get a more genuine reaction. You know, instead of having just base it all off the actor pretending oh my god there's a dinosaur right in front of me it's gonna eat me yeah Yeah. but are we do we want to talk a little bit now about uh sound effects sure that's 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 more my wheelhouse here um your little house hunter speaking of my wheelhouse uh so yeah i i always love sound effects and especially when i was like in high school when i was starting to learn about it more it was, it was a lot of fun. You know, we had classes where we were learning about, you know, some of the, we were watching a lot of behind the scenes stuff, I remember, for how people came up with certain sounds. And one that sticks in my head for some reason, I don't really remember why, is, now I don't remember the name of the actual creature, if it has a name, but it's in, uh, I think the first Lord of the Rings, you know, they're being attacked by some like, tentacle monster thing or something oh yeah that thing in, yeah. in the water yeah and uh i just remember you know they were showing they went you know like the the foley crew uh went out with uh like all these like all these plumbing kind of materials or something like bathroom things and they would just like go into a river and like splash around with it and uh, you just get all these different sounds and the fun thing i think about uh doing sound design at least for me is finding a lot of different sounds and just Mm -hmm. kind of stacking them on top of each other and kind of mixing each one a little bit and then you get something that's how you really often get something uh very different maybe if you're trying to create something that doesn't you know by default have a sound because it doesn't exist Right. Uh, right or you know if you're trying to make something sound more characteristic instead of um more realistic I think yeah. what's really interesting about about Foley art and, and sound effects is if you do it well, you never know it's happening. Yeah. And I guess the same thing goes for CGI, mm-hmm. but like not, not, it's not really the same thing because like if you're watching a movie and there's a monster, you're like, okay, clearly that's not, if you think about it for a second, you're like, clearly that monster doesn't exist. <laughs> They're doing some sort of practical effect or CGI, yeah. but with sound effects, it's like, if you never think about the sound effects, they're doing their job really well. See, I always think yeah. about sound effects. <laughs> I do too. I I've started really, I've started really appreciating them um, in the last like year or so, mostly in video games. Um, and I, I literally, you can ask my husband. I like freaked out when I first started playing um, Breath of the Wild on my Switch because when Link wakes up, he's like just wearing like 
shorts and a t-shirt and he's got <gasps> really really wonderful like slappy barefoot sounds when he runs mm-hmm. and i was just like really appreciating like it sounds like slappy barefoot feet yeah. someone um, i mean that's probably because someone went out there and actually recorded i've had to do that before i've had to, not barefoot uh but i've had to record um just people walking on the sidewalk for different mm-hmm. contexts yeah. yeah but yeah. i've been learning for to appreciate of- them more and more and they're they're really wonderful if you pick them out <laughs> Yeah. yeah, for a lot of um, I, I know for a lot of uh, modern video games, they record like the actual like go to a gun range and record the actual gun being fired of the one that the one that the character will be, will be using in the game, like a sniper rifle, a mm-hmm. you know twenty two shotgun, all those th- all those guns. Yeah. yeah, the, I mean the problem with that I can see though I I haven't looked too into like actually recording gun sounds and stuff. Especially in a gun range, though, I imagine that's quite difficult because mm-hmm. with the layout of that, you know, you're always going to have to, you're always going to want to keep headphones on oh, yeah, when yeah. you're in a shooting range firing a weapon, or even if just other people are, um, because it's super loud. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to yeah. get, uh, you're, I don't know how they control this, you know, so they're, no doubt you're going to get a lot of distortion, or you're very likely to, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. It'd probably be better in, I would think it would be better almost to record outside, uh, maybe depending on where, on what it is for the game, but yeah, that's just, yeah, I think, and also real quick, I just want to say one of my proudest moments uh, from when I was uh, taking classes in sound design was we had to, we had to choose a scene from a movie and like take out all the sound and replace it with our own Mm -hmm. so like dialogue and sound effects and music and everything so i had to write the music uh make sound effects and everything and the scene that that me and my partner at the time had was it was the flight test in iron man one and there's one one (laughs) sound in particular that i loved uh because I thought we were really creative and we kind of broke the rules to get it was, uh, you know, there, if you remember that scene, there's a part where like, you're looking at his, at like the boot parts, you know, mm-hmm. the, the shoes and you can see like a little bit of air, like escaping from it. And it like, if you listen to it, it makes like a sound. Yeah. And so, you know, I watched that and I was like, I think I know exactly what's going to make the sound but we can't really let our teachers know that we're going to do this. Um, So you're not allowed to have drinks or anything in the recording around the recording equipment. Mm -hmm. But I figured the best thing to make this sound is going to be a soda, like a a soda bottle opening. Cause you know, and this was, this got dangerous because we had to get something one that was really good at it. So I think we went and bought a soda, a bottled soda from the machine. And then we got like, we put it like right up next to the microphone and had, and I think we even shook it up. I think we shook it up some to make sure we got the sound or maybe we didn't. I don't remember. It it was risky. (laughs) And uh, we had someone just go like, like open it and close it real quickly to make sure it didn't make a mess. And it worked out fantastic. That was, I think the best sound effect in that whole scene there, but. It just seems like it would be a really fun job to, like, I mean, like, obviously there's so much that goes into it, but I, I, I have been learning to appreciate sound a lot more, and I would love to just, like, take a stick and, like, go smacking things in my house and being like, what does that sound like? What does that sound like? I have done something kind of like that before. <laughs> it just sounds like a really fascinating and, yes. like, creative uh, thing for a person to do. Yeah. I yeah. mean... Honestly, I've had like three or four, maybe more projects over time that I've had to do sound effects and fully for, which I, I always think it's a lot of fun. I love yeah. doing that. Or just the people that can do like, I guess, can make body sounds or just reaction or, or just make, or just like come up with character, and, and, well, I guess with character voices for like animals or creatures. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is, yeah. is, um. I can't remember his name, but there's, like, one guy who did all the voice acting for, like, Appa and Momo from 
avatar. D, D. Bradley Baker. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> like, he just like this little monkey creature, little lemur, and also yeah. this giant bison, and he's just making all these like animal sounds. Because that definitely doesn't seem like a sound you can create by just like smacking things or rubbing things or, or right. whatever. I, mean, I know a lot of times for some weird animals, I've heard, I remember hearing a lot of stories about how many things especially big monstrous creatures tend to be like like a bear and uh mixed with like a lion and tiger and all yeah. these other things mm-hmm. and that's yeah. how you get some more unique whale, sounding animals yeah. because it's like yeah. five animals stacked together a whale and an animal a whale and an elephant um i know uh, uh d bradley baker he he said that he um kind of watch watches a lot of um animal shows and he actually like <laughs> watches like bugs in the in like in the lot and like outside and like i guess figures out what they're like kind of tries to get in their head so to speak mm-hmm. to figure out what kind of what they're thinking about or just kind of like listen to the sounds yeah. that you that, that, that are picked up when they're on the show and just kind it's of, just like, fascinating go, because go off those. yeah because i have i have vocal training in music i i have some some singing background and i like sure. cannot imagine using my vocal cords to make sounds like that yeah. yeah, prepare for some. You need you need a lot of tea with honey. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. yeah, or uh, that um, or that uh, the musician uh, Bob McFerrin, who does most of his songs as you know, like, and he records himself making different sounds. So he's the the vo- he's the lead singer and like the background the instruments in the song. Oh, like or yeah, the, yeah. Or the background singers. Or like any kind of acapella is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it, especially being a, a female and being um, mezzo soprano, so I'm in like the medium high range vocally. When you, when I hear people who do like the really low bass beats, I'm like, how do you do that? Like, it's so beyond the realm of anything I can imagine doing. Yeah. It's I I love it. I get very excited. <laughs> yeah, bass. I used to kind of be able to get down there. It hurts me to do that now. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> Josh can do it. Josh, you yeah, yeah. you have a naturally lower voice. I don't say you don't. You definitely don't have, in my opinion, naturally bass. But you're obviously lower. Yeah, so maybe, kind of... that would be baritone. That's what I was thinking. Actually, I was like, well, maybe I'm thinking baritone. Baritone, yeah. yeah. It, um, kind of, it kind of follows, and I have to kind of force it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. If you think of um, Christopher Judge, who did. Who was um, Kratos? God of War, th- God, God of War Four, and he's also in Stargate. He has an incredibly low voice, um, and then there is also a couple acapella groups that have some really amazing, like really low vocalists. I'm also thinking uh, Keith David, who I just love yeah. his voice. Like to me, yeah. he's I don't know now. I don't compare them like back he to back in, ever. He's in Community. Uh, he played uh, the um, the lead gargoyle in Gargles. He's done a lot Gargoyles. of things. If if He's you knew who season. he was, it, it, like if you heard him, knowing who he was, then you'd probably recognize him from a lot of stuff. Look at his well, face. He apparently and look and, and then listen to his. Like, he was the reel. so the one that I know him from because I'm I watch different sorts of things than you guys. Is he was the um, evil voodoo man in Princess and the Frog? Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, but no, he's like, a good voice actor. I, I almost tend to think that I like, <laughs> maybe this is blasphemous and maybe I should research a little more, do a little more comparison to say this, but I feel like he's a better narrator or has a better voice for narration than Morgan Freeman. Ooh, His, they be fighting words. I know. <laughs> I mean, I do kind of, I do like, I can't choose between the two of them, but I do, I do think that he has... Morgan Freeman has more of a uh, like more of a, like a mid tone speaking voice with a little bit of bass, but if you want more bass, you go with keep keep David. Yeah, a little more a little more gravitas. Yeah, um, and maybe yeah. it's just I feel like perhaps I've uh, I've seen Keith David in more variety, you know, do a, a larger range of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, with the stuff that we watch, we definitely see more Keith David. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, doing this stuff uh, takes can take a lot of money or can take almost no money. Uh, I, I noticed that that can, I guess, the more like ex, more like I guess 
sci-fi fantasy movie or like one of these mainstream sci-fi fantasy movies are out there the more they have the i can see them trying to promote it or there's more stress on them to like make that money back with box office or with people buying whatever it is they buy because it caught those cost a lot of money and i'm sure i know that hunter you probably you know are probably told we're probably told ad nauseum you know you break the stuff you know you, you buy it or you know don't break the stuff or you will be, I've been told don't break this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um but but usually the money goes toward can go can go can go to make making good, you know, effects and making them look good. Because you want to be able to kind of immerse yourself in that world and fill the gaps of like, oh, this is where a person or an animal or a creature <clears throat> well sorry a person or animal or physics wouldn't allow this to happen like with you know a crazy weather effect or um you know we can't really put make an animal make an elephant as big bigger we can't no. really make an all all fonts don't really exist so we have to cgi <laughs> Yeah, and I think that CGI is wonderful for those kinds of things, but I think that's also why I, and this is a completely different topic, but I think it's part of why I love animation so much, hmm. is because, like, you, the possibilities are literally endless uh, in terms of what you can make. Um, and it's less so, I feel like, with CG and practical effects, just because you are trying to put it in, like, this realistic kind of world with actual people. And so you hmm. have to play this line between, like, doing the crazy things you want to do and making it like cheesy and over the top yeah, yeah. right but that it's i feel like it's a lot easier to do stuff like that in animation mm. oh absolutely absolutely so Tell any kind of story you want uh i was just gonna try to ask or i wasn't gonna try i was just going to ask um and i actually maybe it is try because i don't know how to say it uh do you guys have a, like, maybe an example in the past, I don't know, 20 years of, like, some of the best CGI and then some of the worst CGI? I know I'm hesitating slightly on saying best and worst in 20 years because mm, yeah, it's obviously much stronger now than it was 20 years ago, but... Uh. Just one thing that I I tend to think of for bad CGI. <laughs> Actually, first off, there first off, there's a couple. One, probably mostly because it's on the older side now, was uh, the Matrix uh, Reloaded. Mm-hmm. You know where he's doing where Neo's doing the fight of all against all yeah. the Smith clones, and it just yeah, it looks so bad. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, I feel like that's one of those like you're trying to balance this incredible thing you want to do with trying to make it not cheesy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it didn't work. No, yeah, no. it looked yeah. maybe good for video games. Yeah, it, uh, that's it's like At the oh, time, but yeah, They'll, oh they they play video games. They'll like this stuff. It's like nah, it doesn't look good on a TV, man. On on, on, on the movies, man. On yeah. the movie screen, doesn't it doesn't work. <laughs> But uh, also, of course, you guys should know by now, another big complaint in terms of CGI that I have is from the worst Star Wars movie ever, Rogue One, where you had CGI Tarkin, and it just looked like crap, especially when you compare it to it having probably one of the best CGI moments uh, with Darth Vader at the end, that whole scene was beautiful CGI. Tarkin was littered throughout the movie and they could have put like three of himself next to each other and it it would have been it would have looked in place given the quality of the CGI. Wow, Hunter says something nice about Rogue One. <laughs> Get out of town. Get out of no, town. But, but there is something about like this kind of new technology because I think I know what you're talking about. Um, about like trying to essentially make, um, I mean, use the faces of actors who have passed away, which is kind of mm-hmm. weird yeah. to me, um, or making them younger, um, yeah. which is much trickier than making them older. Uh, it, that is kind of a new thing and is has been pretty mit- hit or miss so far. I think yeah. <laughs> mostly. Well, uh, you know, in uh, Endgame, when they went back in time to the 2012 scene. 
though they they uh, de-aged the actors there. De-aging, um, I their... feel, is very different though from recreating someone who's just. Dead. It is, and that's still only. Yeah, that's that, that's, that's, that's that's like one side you have de-aging, one side you have bringing somebody back to life. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like the latter is usually. First of all, it just kind of weirds me out on like a moral basis, <laughs> but that's a yeah. topic for another day. Um, but I feel like visually it also is a little bit of that uncanny valley where you're like, you're mm-hmm. not a real person. Also, I mm-hmm. know you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. Just a yeah. little weird. Yeah. Yeah. One um, of Rogue One's many I, mistakes. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. <come on. laughs> uh, I'm thinking of something that I watched. I watched uh, Blade last night. Um, and they had an alternate uh, ending that they had like shot done test footage for, but did not make it to the final cut at all. The final cut was way better. And this movie came out in 1998. Um, and they had tried to do a, um, a scene where instead of the bad guy being just this, you know, be able to, you know, create blood, you know, tentacles or put himself to, or if you cut off an arm, it, he just grows, a, a, a blood spout comes out and he grows another arm back. Or if you cut him in half, he just the blood just kind of connects both his his torso and his lower body together, and he comes back together. But they but in this deleted scene, they made a they turned him into it had him become a blood tornado, and they had him come out of that tornado, and they you could see that they just cut um, the like his top hat, his torso from his torso from his, from his stomach to his head up, and they had him like moving around like a in like like a box, like in the in the frame. And okay. it was just, it was terrible. It sounds terrible. Yeah, yeah. If you can, if you guys look, want to look it up, it's on you. It should, it's on I feel YouTube. like I, I don't do. want to look it up. Look it up, look it up. It's it's terrible. Just, no. <laughs> they, and they were like, and I'm glad they decided, no, let's not do that. And let's make something a little more, you know, believable. Yeah. Because we are, we are, we're already stretching things because it's 1998. Our <laughs> can't, do, can't do all that. <laughs> I think we can't talk about um, CG and good CG without talking about Avatar. Um, right right because i really feel like if you look back on it and you look back objectively it's not a fantastic movie it is basically pocahontas like the story is kind of eh. in space yeah but it but like its claim to fame was cg and the fact that it especially being 3d it was like the most amazing we we like had no idea 3d could be like that when it came out Mm -hmm. um and it it visually is stunning um, even though I'm not particularly a fan of it these days. Mm-hmm. Blame. Honestly, I can't say much about that. It's been so long since I've seen Avatar. Mm-hmm. I remember sitting in the theater and being like in awe of, yeah. Yeah. of the environment and the world Me that too. they throw yeah. you into. I mean, I remember yeah. loving it. I think I saw it like three times in theaters. I don't remember. <laughs> mm-hmm. That yeah. could be a lie. I don't know. Yeah. I watched it on on a DVD, and it, it was like it was still like amazing to watch. Yeah, but yeah, uh, there's a there's a a lot of history here with special effects. Um, you know, check some check out some good and bad stuff. You know, <laughs> you'll, you'll find you'll find a lot when you walk when you go to watch a, a mo- some modern sci-fi mm-hmm. fantasy. And keep but, your uh, eyes and ears open. Yes, yes. I have Hopefully, your eyes don't hurt too much. Oh yes, thank you, thank you all for listening to this episode of Nerd Variety Podcast. Uh, hopefully, you'll, I'm sure you'll check out some cool, good, and awful uh, effects in the next shows, movies you watch. You know, let us know what are the you know the most okayest that you see. And we want them. we want to try to ruin uh, the experience for you and make you think about everything that you're watching and notice how bad things actually are. Yeah. So, um, you're welcome. Yeah. Just trying to make want- you active consumers of media, not just yeah. mindless robots. But also just to smash the illusions that you're experiencing. Take away the childhood wonder. Yes. Take away the joy of watching movies and shows. No suspension of disbelief. Exactly. Forever. Exactly. Anyway. Uh, now, I did... What's there the- were. As usual, there were plenty that I wanted to talk about but didn't get to, either because I blanked it or I just, there's too many. But, so this is the obligatory hmm. Hunter doesn't have time to talk about the things one, Hunter wanted to talk about, so Hunter's just talking about how Hunter can't talk about the things Hunter exactly. wants to talk about. Exactly. I do that. Cool. Often, Maybe we'll have a, we'll do, an, we'll do a sequel of this discussion. 
and then there's that too. There's Josh promising that, or well, saying that we might do a sequel. Are we getting predictable? I don't know. Yes. I like. I think everyone likes sequels, and <laughs> so everyone is. Everyone else is predictable. Oh yeah, maybe that's what we should do to be successful: just redo the same episode over and over again, but differently. Yes. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> differently as in, yeah, we can do things differently. It's possible. Yeah. We'll have better CG next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have horns on. Now that we're entirely audio, um, I don't know that that's going to matter. We can do some foley art. We can just like. We we can do some some visual effects just for the three of us. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Hunter Hunter could be it could be his, his voice could be his voice and my voice at the same time. It could be. Yeah. Hannah's could be like a thousand people at once. A thousand Hannahs. A thousand Hannahs. Yeah, just, just add, each, you a, each being like point one seconds off. <laughs> we are legion. <laughs> Or point of one that way. It's it, it, it's, it's going to be so awesome. But uh, what's next week's topic? Next week, I think that's me, right, Hannah? Is I think so. Uh, I think next week's me, and I believe we are talking about parodies. Uh, okay. And I've been looking forward to this one. Uh, I like parodies. Uh, just you know, spoiler: I've been a huge Weird Al fan like my entire life. So uh, there's that. But we're probably going to talk more about video games, movies, and television that do it more um because i always enjoy that and that's going to be another big topic that we will not get to finish talking about what i want to talk about probably not probably not definitely two part two part two part episode maybe the second part which won't come out till two seasons later yes yeah but that is all the time we have we uh, hope that everyone stays safe and does not catch the rona stay positive test negative Yep. Um, and also, I just want to take a second here uh, real quick to remind everybody, or actually more likely let everybody know, that we are ha- we, we got a, a website up. Uh, I think it's live now. It looks woo, like it is. And uh, we're looking at actually appearing professional. We may not sound professional, but we will try to look it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 We'll have CG ties next time. Yeah. But yeah, so have a good one. Nerd out. Bye. Yeah.